Good evening. Uh, we present the news summary. The Central Bank Foreign Exchange Reserve is currently at uh, $595 million with $448 million that may be used. The governor of the Central Bank says that the reserve may last up to 18 months as predicted. The governor has, however, said that demand for foreign exchange is higher than the amount available in banks and there has been a depreciation of the rupee lately. We would like to continue the emphasis of uh, all economic actors to really look at our demand and, and minimize the level of demand so that we can have a stable uh, exchange rate and also uh, in the use of our country's resources, which is the reserves position. And on that one, we have, as of Friday, $595 million global, of which 448 um, can be used. And uh, during this month so far, uh, we've sold 2.3 million to STC, and uh, we auctioned $2 million, to which the market bought 1.7 million. People on Prale and Ladi say they are paying twice the price for construction materials. This has become evident over the past four months due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has contributed to the increase in the rate of foreign exchange. People from the inner islands are calling on the government to take measures to alleviate their plight. HEP-free future is the theme for this year's World Hepatitis Day, which is tomorrow, the 28th of July. Hepatitis is a virus that affects the liver and it exists in five different types, A to E. Seychelles is more con concerned with the viral hepatitis types B and C. It is estimated that over 1,200 people are living with hepatitis in the country. The Drug Utilization Response Network Seychelles uh, Derns believes that a hep-free future is possible for Seychelles as long as all partners involved in the fight against hepatitis work together. To be honest, it is a big concern for Seychelles precisely because we do have people in the Seychelles living with viral hepatitis, especially hepatitis C. Uh, we have about 1,100 uh, people living with uh, hepatitis C and we have about 120 people living with uh, hep hepatitis B. Um, the theme, Hep Free Future, well, yes, we believe in that. I mean, our NGO believes in that because we believe for a small country like Seychelles, we can put this uh, virus under control. What we need to do is, of course, educate our people. When you say educate our people also, is give the right information. WHO is saying help free future because they want to uh, emphasize the importance of accelerating the response to, he to hepatitis. Accelerate the prevention response, the treatment response, and everything that goes with it. So, yes, Seychelles can be a help free country because we do have vaccination for hepatitis B and we have treatment that, are, that is available for hepatitis C. The question remains is, do we have enough vaccinations? Do we have enough treatment? Are we treating our people? Are we vaccinating our people? The uh, adopted brother of a political dissident has told the Truth Commissioners how he disapproved of his sabotage activities. Emilien Rosette was responding to Cyril Lauti's claims that he'd tipped off the authorities about his secret schemes. He admitted giving away the resistance group's plot to block off water pipes supplying the National Youth Service on Setan, but he denied recording Mr. Lauti's conversations and passing them on or being party to plans to blow him up in his car. One thing I want to tell you is our objective here, our overriding objective, is to reconcile people. I know. So I hope that you and Mr. Lati, I know you get on fine, right? You wait. I have put that thing behind me yeah, the good. day I left at That's his good. place. Good. Yeah. I have done that. Mm -hmm. Good. But it seems he had not done that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe now. we need to work on him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could be right. Also today, the panel questioned a member of the intelligence unit that operated at State, ha at State House during the one-party state. Charles Milley said he wasn't aware of human rights abuses 
committed while he was working for state security. He described how he typed up intelligence material gathered by spies in the community before the unit was disbanded in 1992. He said it was operated on a need-to-know basis, but he personally hadn't knowingly violated people's human rights. As from next week, it will be mandatory for members of the public to wear face masks inside all courtrooms as social distancing measures are difficult to maintain. The judiciary has said in a statement that members of the public not wearing face masks will not be permitted to enter the courtrooms. The decision has been taken in line with the re reopening of the international airport to commercial flights on Saturday the 1st of August, increasing the local community's exposure to COVID-19. This was the news summary. Thank you for your attention.